me again. And I'm at the Seagull Science Center again. And the reason why is because I'm going to be doing my next Ben's Wild, Aven Ben's Wild Adventure episode about sharks. And there are two main reasons why. Number one, because of the movie The Meg coming out this Friday. But number two, Shark Week was just two weeks ago. And this year is the 30th anniversary of Shark Week. So that's another reason why. But before I talk about Megalodon, and the first sharks I'm going to talk about are the sharks in this tank, the chain cat sharks. If you move, look down, we'll move a little closer, <clears throat> they're right here. They're not very large sharks, and they're bottom dwellers. They're closely related to the spiny dogfish shark, and... These ones look a lot bigger than what I saw last time. And they've got their skates in here too. The reason skates are related to sharks. And there's egg cases in this tank. They probably belong to both the sharks and the skates. And female sharks are larger than the males, so this these large ones could be females. That would make sense because the egg cases. But another way to tell the difference between male and female sharks is to look between their pelvic fins. Male sharks have these two barb-like points called claspers between their pelvic fins. Female sharks have a small hole called the cloaca between their pelvic fins. And the claspers, I think, are are kind of used to insert sperm into the cloaca, and that's how sharks mate. You just found this on the table. This is a list of all the sharks that live in the Atlantic Gulf of Mexico. And there are, today there are 600 different species of sharks worldwide, and they've been around for half a billion years, and I'm sure you, we're all familiar with them, like from the movie Jaws and Sharknado, and another movie called Shark to Puss, I'll tell you about those later, but um, these sharks, they're all native to, to the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico, and Sharks are fish, and most fish are cold-blooded, but <clears throat> mackerel sharks, like the great white, and tuna, like the bluefin tuna, are the only fish in the world that are warm-blooded. You see, there's 15 different species of mackerel sharks, and they're divided into seven different family groups, but I only know five different species. The great white shark, the short-fin mako shark, the long-fin mako shark, the salmon shark, and the poor beagle shark. And this right here is a toy of a whale shark, the largest fish in the world. Biggest one ever was 80 feet long, and the width of its mouth is 20% of its body length. That means an 80 foot long whale shark had a mouth 16 feet wide and a mouth that big can filter out a quarter of a million gallons of water in an hour. That's enough, that's more than enough to fill an Olympic sized swimming pool. And the whale shark's skin is a foot thick, but the sperm whale has the thickest skin in the world. Its skin is two feet thick. Of all 600 species of sharks worldwide, only three are filter feeders. The whale shark, the basking shark, and the megamouth shark. Now I've already told you about the whale shark back there. I've seen basking sharks in the wild. When I was out with one of my science group field trips in, in high school, <clears throat> we went out to the Isles of Shoals and we saw two basking sharks. That was really cool. And basking sharks are the second largest fish in the world. The biggest one ever was 50 feet long, not as large as the whale shark. And 
The whale shark and the basking shark are both common, but the megamouth shark is one of the rarest sharks in the world. It's 20 feet long, weighs 2 tons. They were discovered back in the 70s, but since then only about 100 have been seen. And the fastest shark in the world is the mako shark, 62 miles an hour. The Greenland shark has the longest lifespan of any vertebrate in the world. The oldest one ever was 512 years old when it died. The most dangerous shark in the world is the bull shark. The reason why is because it has more testosterone than any other animal in the world, which also makes it the most aggressive animal in the world. So it's even more dangerous than a great white. It's killed more people than any other shark, even more than a great white. And it even has more testosterone than an elephant, which makes it even more aggressive than an elephant. And Another reason why it's the most dangerous is because it's one of the few shark species that can swim in salt water, fresh water, and even brackish water, places you wouldn't really expect to find sharks. And the bull shark's about 15 feet long, weighs about half a ton. And the mako shark also has proportionately the largest brain of any shark in the world in proportion to its body size, which also makes it the smartest shark in the world. Now the great white shark is the most famous shark alive today. It's the largest carnivorous fish in the world and also the third largest fish in the world. The biggest one ever was 40 feet long, <clears throat> had pectoral fins, nine feet wide. Its body was four feet wide, which made it 12.56 feet in girth, because the girth of a circle is always 3.14 times the width, and weighed five tons. That's as heavy as a rhino. And its teeth were four, were four inches long and great white sharks eat seals, octopuses, dolphins, eels, turtles, tuna and fish. They've also been known to eat other sharks, even tiger sharks. And just to let you know, the tiger shark is the fourth largest fish in the world. The largest one ever was 30 feet long and weighed four tons. The largest shark that ever lived was a prehistoric ancestor of the great white shark called Megalodon. Megalodon was not only the largest shark that ever lived, it was also the largest carnivorous fish that ever lived. Um, its teeth were a foot long, and scientists have estimated that there is 10 feet of Megalodon for every inch of tooth, and one ton per foot. That means a Megalodon with teeth a foot long would have been 120 feet long, and would have weighed 120 tons. You're gonna need a bigger boat three times longer and 24 times heavier than the largest known great white shark and its teeth were three times longer than the great white shark's teeth and that's also the same length as the largest known animal that has ever lived the blue whale but not as heavy though because a blue whale weighs 230 tons almost twice as heavy as megalodon but <clears throat> megalodon hunted whales even the blue whale and because the blue whale at 230 tons was almost twice the size of Megalodon and the largest animal that ever lived. That proves Megalodon could take down prey almost twice its size. It's believed that like most sharks, Megalodon had to eat about 3% of its body weight in food every day. <clears throat> that means a 120 ton Megalodon has to eat 3.6 tons of food a day. But the great white shark has to eat a fifth of its body weight in food every day. That means a five ton great white shark has to eat one ton of food a day. And what's interesting is, even though Megalodon is three times longer and 24 times heavier than the great white, both the great white shark and Megalodon both each have the same bite force, 21 tons per square inch. The average human bite is only 300 pounds per square inch, so 140 times stronger than the average human bite. Another other mathematics for Megalodon, our muscle mass is only half our body weight, and our livers are only 4% of our body weight, so the average 200 pound man has 100 pounds of muscle and an eight pound liver. But a shark's muscle mass is 90% of its body weight, and a shark's liver is the largest organ in its body. Its liver is a third of its body weight. That means a 120 ton Megalodon had 108 tons of muscle and a 40 ton liver. And 
A shark's stomach is a fifth of its body length. That means a 120 foot long megalodon had a 24 foot long stomach. And megalodon first appeared 30 million years ago, just 35 million years after the last dinosaurs went extinct. And then it became extinct itself just a million years ago. So it lived on Earth for 29 million years. And during those 29 million years, it was the top predator of all the world's oceans combined at its time. However, in the 19th century, a megalodon tooth was found that was thought to only be 10,000 years old. And that's right when the last ice age ended 10,000 years ago. If it was, then that means megalodon might have survived for at least another 990,000 years longer than previously thought, which made some people wonder if it's still alive today, because some people have reported seeing it. So. We're not sure if Megalodon went extinct. Maybe it's still out there. And that's what the movie The Meg, which is coming out this Friday, talks about. Now, I've already said that the whale shark is the largest fish alive today, and Megalodon was the largest shark that ever lived. <clears throat> but the largest fish that ever lived was a prehistoric fish that lived in the Jurassic period alongside the dinosaurs 160 million years ago called Leeds Ichthys. Lived out in the ocean. It was 100 feet long and some scientists believe it was as large as a blue whale. As heavy as a blue whale probably. And it lived out in the ocean. Like the modern day whale shark, it was a filter feeder. And Megalodon was actually only the second largest carnivore that ever lived. The largest carnivore that ever lived was a giant prehistoric marine reptile that lived alongside Leeds Ichthys and hunted Leeds Ichthys called Liplorodon. Liplorodon was a giant pliosaur. It had four flippers, a short neck, and a crocodile shaped head. It was 90 feet long and weighed 170 tons. There's something else about the great white shark. Despite the great white shark's fearsome reputation, the great white shark has only one enemy, the killer whale. Killer whales are the top predators of all the world's oceans combined alive today. They're 40 feet long and weigh 12 tons. They eat great white sharks and they can also hunt the world's largest carnivore, the sperm whale. It's already been confirmed that in a fight between a killer whale and a great white shark, the killer whale would win because it's bigger and stronger and smarter too. So. Great white sharks do not fear any other animal in the ocean except killer whales. So the killer whale is basically the king of the sea, the real sea king or the real Poseidon or the real King Triton of the animal world. It, because it's the top predator, it's the most dominant animal in the sea. And because it's the great white shark's only enemy, the great white shark's only the second most dominant. The killer whale can take down great white sharks today, but one-on-one -on -one against Megalodon, my money's on Megalodon. Now I want to tell you a little about, about some shark movies. Like, <clears throat> we all know the movie Jaws from 1975 and its sequels. Jaws 2, 1978, Jaws 3, 1983, and Jaws 4, The Revenge, 1987. Jaws was actually inspired by a true story about <clears throat> The 1916 New Jersey Shore shark attacks. There were five shark attacks in 12 days and only one of the five victims survived. And they even made a movie about that called 12 Days of Terror. They said it was either a great white shark or a bull shark. A lot of people think it was a bull shark though because some of the attacks took place in fresh and brackish water. Great white sharks can't swim in fresh and brackish water, but bull sharks can. However, there's one picture of a, sh of a shark that was caught. It resembles a great white, and <clears throat> so it's kind of an unknown shark. It could have been more than one shark. It could have been maybe, maybe all the attacks in the sea were great whites, and all the attacks in fresh and brackish water were bull sharks. But we'll never know for sure. But, um... Jaws terrified people back in 1975. I've even seen clips on TV where people were all screaming watching the film. They nicknamed the shark in the first movie Jaws, Bruce. And that's how the shark from Finding Nemo got its name. And there's another sci-fi film called Zombie Shark. There's several zombie great whites in the film, but the 
alpha male zombie shark was also nicknamed Bruce. It was also named after the shark from the movie Jaws. And you've probably seen in Jaws 2 that dead 23 foot long killer whale washed up on the beach. In real life though, it's the opposite. Remember, because the killer whale is the great white shark's only enemy. Jaws inspired some other films too that came out in the 70s. Piranha, Orca, and Tentacles. And in Orca, the killer whale attacks a great white shark. There's also another shark series called Sharknado. That was the best talked one since Jaws. <clears throat> There's a sixth Sharknado film coming out this August. It's titled Sharknado 6, The Last Sharknado, It's About Time. And so it's gonna be the final chapter. So you'll, you'll see Finn Shepard and his wife, April, one last time. However, there was this show on the Sci-Fi Channel, Shark Mania, the top 15 shark films. Sharknado wasn't in the countdown, and Jaws was only at number four. At number one was Sharktopus. There were three Sharktopus films. Sharktopus, Sharktopus vs. Terracuda, and Sharktopus vs. Werewolf. Hey, maybe they should make Sharktopus vs. Terracuda vs. Werewolf. And the Sharktopus, it's half shark, half octopus. Now, there's actually a cryptid. Remember, cryptids are animals like the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, and the Abominable Snowman. <clears throat> there's actually a cryptid in the Bahamas that resembles the Sharktopus. It's called the Luska. Most people think it's a giant octopus, but some think it's a cross between an octopus and a shark. It could be a real live Sharktopus. It's said to live in the blue holes surrounding the Bahamas. And um, I think I forgot to mention earlier that when I said the main reason why I'm doing this episode is because of the 30th anniversary of Shark Week and the Meg, they actually showed some um, first looks of the Meg in the 30th anniversary of Shark Week, especially in the show called Megalodon Fact vs. Fiction and Shark After Dark. In Shark Week, there's this show called Megalodon, The Monster Shark Lives, and two related shows to it, Megalodon, The New Evidence, and Megalodon Fact vs. Fiction. Now to end this show, I'm gonna give you the top eight legendary great white sharks based on what I've seen from Shark Week. At number eight, Curly. Number seven, Large Marge. Number six, Deep Blue. Number five, Colossus. Number four, Slash. Named after the scar on the left side of his mouth. Number three, El Monstro, the Cuban Great White Shark. Number two, the Prince Edward Island or PEI Great White Shark. And at number one, Submarine, the giant legendary monster Great White Shark. Submarine is believed to be 40 feet long and is twice the size of a normal size Great White Shark. So if a normal size Great White Shark weighs five tons, for Submarine, we're talking 10 tons. Submarine is easy to recognize because he has a scar on the left side of his face. There's only one picture of him ever taken to prove that he exists. However, there was this show on Shark Week called Shark of Darkness, Wrath of Submarine. I'm not sure if, sure if that story was real or not, but they said it was, evi it was more evidence that, sh that Submarine actually exists. It could have been inspired by a true story, but who knows? And Submarine is said to be highly intelligent, even smarter than a Mako shark, as smart as a killer whale. And they say he hunts like a killer whale, and they say his favorite food is people. And Submarine can also stay still like this, horizontally, and then rock it up. So basically you could say Submarine's a man-eating turbo shark. Thanks again for watching this Shark Week <laughs> Ben's Wild Adventure episode. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, dun 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 dun